Hey guys, welcome to another review. I'm Mr. P, uh, and today we are going to be doing something verging on absolutely ridiculous. Um, what I'm doing today from Fast Tick is the K Fun Light Styled Rebuildable Atomizer. 20 milliliters is what it's claiming. Um, <laughs> so, a 30 millimeter, 20 milliliter um, K Fun from Fast Tech Redugan is in this box. Um, now I bought this, uh, actually myself and Worm bought one of these, he is still alive people, he's still out there and I will impart his impressions through to you as well. Um, it's because we've got some 26650 mods, we believe that this is the year of 26650, um, there's some new and exciting batteries coming out for them as well. And you know, we wanted something that fitted the bill and a cape one always fits the bill, so we thought for the cost we'll take a punt on it. So there you go. Um, talking of cost, cost for this bad boy, £15.47 is what it is now um, because you know it's got popular and the price has gone up. When we bought these, they were a fraction over 10 quid. So you know, for, we thought for a tenner a piece, we'll take a punt. So what I'm going to do straight away, I'm going to chuck it on the table, as is the way that I do things. Um, show you about it, do a quick re-wick re on it for you and obviously come back up to me and do the usual level of flapping that I do. Right guys, welcome to a close up of the 30 millimeter, 20 milliliter apparently, um, apparently, um, K Fun from Fast Tech. So I'm just gonna go straight into this. First of all, white sort of little gift box or a buildable tank atomizer written on it. The Fast Tech SKUs we used to, all of our relevant markings, fairly simple stuff. All we want to do is just take out and pop out the box. So to start with, let's have a look at what you get in here. You get the blue screwdriver that we're all used to, and then a couple of sort of standard coils and silica in there. Let's just not worry about that. And then you get the AE itself, who well, it wants to run away. Let's grab that box, let's stick her over there. Right then. <laughs> Let's have a look. So, starting with well, what I would consider to be a very ugly drip tip. Um, it's very Mesto logo on it. Okay, um, 1839 this is a branding, uh, the main serial number. Uh, and then, you know, sort of a brass accent or whatever, if you like. Um, and that just pops out. I do want to say now, this drip tip is fucking huge. I mean, it's a double O-ring. Nice. It's not going to go anywhere like that. But look at the size. Of, I mean, I... That's an iGo, that's an iGo uh, S there. Look, look at the size of it. This thing is like a Zeus atomizer. Okay, this thing's like the same size as a bloody Zeus. It's huge drip tip. Um, but there you go, there you go, that's drip tip. So, top cap, let's go in. Now this is more, well, 510 drip tip. You can replace, that's the great thing about this. You can replace the ugly drip tip if you want to uh, with a 510. Um, and you, you stand a bit, you know. In here is different to a KFN, obviously. This comes in um, as opposed to, you know, your threadings being sort of a lot lower down and had that hollowed out, you know, for more juice capacity. So unfortunately, they could have routed that out in there and give us, well, the size of this bit of metal, about another milliliter. But anyway, screw threadings on there. They seem nice and smooth. They screw in well. Um, you've got an O-ring there, obviously, to prevent leakages. Uh, and then in here, you know, like I say, standard 5 temperature drip tip um, with a reducer, which, you know, doesn't really matter because the air hole's going to reduce it. Just in here, you've got a little white O-ring. Hopefully, you can make that out with a glare. Obviously, to provide you a uh, leak-proof seal around the top, uh, top tin man's hat or the chimney. Um, so that's that. Um, we'll go into the tank sections. This, like I say, is the... Um, full stainless steel one without the PMA uh, tank. Now, we did that, both myself and Will have this, hoping that we'd be able to get a clear tank, and we did actually source this one from Modernities for a fiver, which is a lot quicker delivery, but it doesn't fit, it just, <laughs> it's too big. So, if you want the tank section, don't rely on getting it from elsewhere, get it from Fekery Dugan. Um, now, this is, you know, pretty standard stuff, really. Three tank sections, top, middle, and bottom. There you go. We'll start with the bottom. This is the bottom because there's logo on it, so obviously it has a way to go up. Um, and there you go. You know, Sfo Mesto logo on there. Sorry about the glare, guys. This camera's a bit of a pain in the ass for that. Sfo Mesto written right there, and their logo. Other than that, 
the threads internally are spot on um, and it's a stainless steel tube, a big one. I've got big fingers guys if you think that's, you know, it doesn't look too big. I've got massive fingers, um, but just a stainless steel tube section. Uh, the middle is much in the same. The screw threads here and here seem pretty spot on. O-ring top and bottom obviously to give you that leak proof seal. Um, and then, you know, not a bad finish on the inside or the external. This is a, it's not polished. It's not, I mean, it's semi polished, but it's not full polish, so you know, it's partially shiny, is what we'll say. Um, but other than that, you know, it's just a standard, it's, it's the same tame section, and this one's exactly the same, it's just it doesn't have the uh, logo on. Now, into here, um, now what we've got in here is, you know, if you're familiar with the cave, standard stuff, really, um, apart from much bigger Tin Man's hat, as I call it, or the chimney top, there. Yeah. Okay, fairly good stuff. The screw threads aren't too bad on that. They're a little bit sharp, but not too bad. Big, big bit of metal in comparison to, you know, the legitimate one or even the the 22 mil clones. Then you've got your chamber section here, um, and again, this is very big, but screws in nice. It's a little bit squeaky here and there, but you know, it does exactly what it needs to do. Into the base, so. As you can see, everything is, is pretty much as you'd expect it to be. Um, you know, you've got Durant insulator, which they haven't bothered to cut down too much, um, but you know, I'd rather it be a bit too big than a bit too small. Um, the the screws have started, I'm gonna try slightly to discolor or copperize. I believe that they might be chrome plated brass. Um, they don't learn, but hey ho. Um, and that is what it is. You have got your juice channels here and here. Now, I have just noticed one thing, and that's literally just in this camera. Hopefully, I can get rid of this glare. You see here, your juice channel's cut out. If I flip it around to this one, your juice channel's actually obstructed by that bit of Delrin. So, I think what I shall do is, I'm not unhappy with the Delrin placement there, is I'm gonna grab my blow torch in case, and just, I'll see if I can rectify the situation beforehand. But, if not, there is always a fix, guys. I'm gonna grab my, let's do it this way because it's wires over there. Grab the blowtorch and hold it against my uh, screwdriver for a minute or two, just to get it nice and hot. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna melt that insulator. So, that's nice and I'll hop, blow that out. And I'm just gonna grab this here, like so, like that, and hold it against. I'm gonna melt that insulator like that and I'm gonna pick out any of the crap that is left behind because we can't afford for that to be happening. It's not about building a K fund that holds. It claims 20 mil, I have my doubts, um, but it's not about building it and filling it to find out it's leaking on you. So make it nice and hot again and do the same again. Make sure that it's clear all the way down. If you now have a look at it, you can see it's clear. Um, and there is a little bit of an obstruction on this side. I wonder if it's still hot enough to get it. No, it's not, so we're going for the third time. Doesn't need to be super hot. You could do this with a lighter and, you know, a little pin or something. It'll take you longer. It just so happens that this screwdriver I picked up seems to fit into this well or these grooves perfectly. But there you go. Okay, so yes, they have their problems fast tech, but problem solved. So, as I was saying, everything in here seems to be pretty much as you expect it to be, but bigger. Um, you've got your screw at the bottom here for filling. Um, I'm not going to fill it that way today. One, because I want to test the capacity as best I can with what I've got on me. Uh, and two, you can't see when it's full because I haven't got the, the PMMA tank. Um, threading around here seems quite nice. O-ring provides a nice seal. Airflow here, I'd have liked a bit of a bigger airflow to be honest with you, since it's a bigger atty, um, and typically you'd put lower builds in bigger atty, it's just, it's just how it is. Um, but, you know, it's all there, designed in Russia, made in Germany, cloned by China. So, I do just want to make a little size comparison because I have got another clone here from Fastec, if I can get it undone, and it not play silly buggers with me, which is kind of the story of my life. I'm not gonna be able to, but that's a size difference. 22 mil, 30 mil, this thing is gigantic. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna chuck a quick build in it 
not a, not a complicated build. This is a K-Fun, it should vape like a K-Fun in my book, therefore, I'm gonna slip my can stand a K-Fun build in it, so what I've got is a bit of a 0.34 candle, and I have got a two millimeter uh, steel rod or drill bit, whichever you have is fine. Um, and then literally all I'm gonna do is one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to undo two of those, so there we go. These move a nice little six, five, five, six rep, okay. That could be about 0.8 to 1 ohm. Um, all we're going to do, let's see if I can bring you in a bit, and, so you can have a little close up. All we're going to do is stick our coil in. Sorry, guys, that way is the facing me, that way is facing you. So I'm kind of working like that, and hopefully, you're okay with that. Um, so I'm going to stick the screwdriver in and undo my screws. Now one thing to bear in mind, and it is one of the first things that Worm said, bloody screw, one of the first things that Worm said um, to me is that <clears throat> with a standard cake on build, which is what you tend to want to stick in this, because of the distance between here and here and here, okay, how big it is, um, you tend to not get the same results because basically Worm said he had a hot leg issue um, because of the distance you know of the leg so something to be aware of now putting the bigger wires in it is an option it's easier than in some of the clones of the 22mm version but it's still not in any way shape or form as easy as it is to get it into a 22mm uh, K-Fun you know if you were sticking 0.5 in a K-Fun it never really gives me any trouble, but in here, you know, it can do when it fancies it. So all I do is pull them tight like so, give that a little turn and a tighten up there and up there, just to bring them away. Um, I'll make sure I've got enough adjustment in my coil, which I have, and give them a snip. Now obviously make sure you're not leaving any long legs because you get a short, not so much an issue in this, that way, but this way, oh, hello, we're very close to the outside, so leaving a little leg there could cause you a short. Um, I'm just gonna pop my drill bit, sorry guys, now I'm off camera, I'm grabbing a, a rogue drill bit. Pop my drill bit back there, and what I tend to do, I'm gonna go for a straight call today, so I tend to bring it up a bit, so we're sitting off of the deck, like so. There we go, like that. All right, and, uh, just position her over the air hole. Now, I mean, it's up to you how you run it. Last time I didn't actually run this like this, but it shouldn't matter so much, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, and then I'm gonna grab a mod. Sorry guys, little phone call, so I had to stop there. Um, like I said, I'm just gonna chuck this onto a mod. This is going on to the Panzer clone from Fast Tech, so there we go. Um, let me just zoom you out a very slight fraction more like so. Um, so it's going on to the big old Panzer for the big old K-Fun. So there we go. Now if I take this off, we should get a bit of coil or lightage, and we do. So what I'm gonna do is just grab my tweezers real quick. With this, like you say, I mean, you will notice, I'm gonna zoom you back in just briefly. You will notice that the hot legs don't come until the coils are light and it's not even finished yet. So i give this a little squeeze. That there is what my recall should do, and you'll notice even now the legs are only just starting to get hot there. <sighs> so we should be fine, peoples. Um, I think I'll leave her as she is for now whilst I cotton it um, because I would like you to see. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just making a cotton wick, guys. If you bear with me, just two ticks. Um, this, obviously, with the amount of excess room that you have over the 20 mil version, let's face it, most of us are used to a K fun at this stage, and it's probably why you're looking at getting this one. Um, there's a, there is a bit of a learning curve when it comes to wicking. Um, what I'd like to have seen, if I'm honest with you, is a bigger out hole here, a bigger one here, a four channel, you know, here and here, four channel deck. Um, and a bit of a bigger screw situation, so I could put some low builds and have a, a few more build options. K funds are great for flavour, they're great to build, but the options they give you aren't spectacular. Um, so, standard stuff, plonk her through, 
and about there is where I like to be. Now what I'm going to do is I will trim this side. I'll try to with the world's well, smallest tweezers scissors uh, there, and I'll leave this side about the same. So there, not that it will matter. You shall see. Lift them up like so. Okay, and then all I do is just grab that one, grab that one, and pop her over. So I know I've camera a bit there, but I'm shocking any crap. It's just how it is. There we go. So now, typically, you would sort of this would be a much too much cotton for a standard cave on, but you plonk it in like so, you know, and, and you'd be away. Now what I've found with this one, is that after having done that, even like that, there tends to be a fair bit of room. So what I like to do, is just grab any old straggly bit of cotton, and it's just to ensure a decent bit of wicking, is plonk this down here. An extra, extra little bit of cotton's never gonna hurt you. Or well, in this case it might, but I'll show you again, I'll show you why. A um, bit of cotton there. And the same on the other side, it's just to connect the wicks. If you've got the space to connect wicks, um, either in a dual core or a dual channel system, then my advice would be to definitely do it. Because, you know, one side may get a little bit more love than the other one. And it's all about love. So, like that. Now, I'm going to prime this. Oh, I'm going to use, got some. Let's go with this one. This is uh, number one e juices devil's kiss is what we're using today. Um, so I'm just going to prime the coil. That's it. Just there. That much. And another couple of drops. And that is all. Um, let's just make sure she's all working fine. No problems whatsoever. Now. The reason I say that actually cotton may do you is because you can see your screw threads in there and there. Just make sure that all cotton is well clear from the juice threads and nothing is obstructing them. Like over here, that was massively obstructing them. Um, I would put juice on them to help me out, but I plan on top filling this. And with 30mm K fun, if a leak starts, it can be disastrous. So just pack it down a little bit, okay? Then grab your top cap, or your top part of the chimney, and screw that all down. Lovely stuff. Let's zoom you back out a little bit for the rest of this, so you can see all the crap all over my desk. There we go. Um, now, like I say, grab the branded one, you know, the logo, I'm zoom you back in. This camera stuff really isn't my forte, is it? Zoom you back in, and, there we go. Grab this tank section. Let's flip around so if we get an easier bite. There we go. So, not bad, but not perfect by any means, these screw threads. And then, bosh, there we go. Now, I'm not entirely sure about the capacity of this tank. It says it's 20 milliliters. Now, with top filling this, it could be a bit difficult because we've got to leave that much space there. Okay, we can't go right to the very top, but this is a 10 mil bottle. It's just been opened. It's as full as it can be with exception of the priming. I'm gonna go for it and see what happens. If we can get this whole bottle in, I believe that it holds 10 mil at least. Now, obviously we're only just over the chimney now. And to be honest here, that's not where the juice capacity really is and we're at half a bottle, so, <laughs> well, it might be looking like I'm coming out of this with a, a red face, but let's give it a go. We're still feeling, guys. We are. Still feeling. So, no, no chance. 10 mil. 10 mil is what you'll get in this, which is that entire bottle of juice. Um, you're never, you're never getting 20 mil in there. 
10 mil is just about all you'll get in. Um, I've now got a little bit of leakage starting to happen already around the air hole because I didn't have my finger in it, which is what I usually do when I'm top filling, but I was trying to show you on camera. If you're on top fill, this is what I would suggest. Do that, get that on a little bit, flip it upside down like so. I'm holding it there with a bit of cotton there. Give it a second for all of the air to travel up, then screw it down. Hopefully, then you're forcing air into your chamber and not liquid. But looking at them drops on the table, doesn't look like that's the case, does it? On the upside, though, we do know that our wick is fully primed. Uh, and then grab our drip tip and slot it back in. Now, what we'll do is come back up to me for a nice little vapory dugan. Hey guys, welcome back up to me. Um, sorry for the monumental cock I've been that close up with the uh, leaking and so on. Um, but, you know, I had a couple of vapes in it and we're now as we should be. So, let's have another quick vape. Um, so, it ain't 20 mil, is it? Let's be fair. You've just seen it on the camera. Um, 10 mil. Now, don't get me wrong, that's still an absurd amount of ELE if you're having one tank. But it's not what's stated, so whatever that says, 20 mil. I mean, if I had that clear tank section, I'd be able to get a more accurate measure because obviously I don't know how much space is in there. But the fact that a load of e liquid came out, probably my fault um, for, for top filling and the fact that I'm doing things quickly because that's just me. Um, but you might, you might squeeze 12 mil, <laughs> but I don't think so. 10 mil, realistically. So. No idea where they're getting that measurement from. When I saw the title and Worm saw the title, we both thought it was optimistic for 20 milliliters to be in one tank. Um, and more to the point, to be honest with you, this is a blessing in disguise because 20 mil is a lot of e-liquid. Um, if you're a standard sort of 1, 1.4 ohm user on a, a mech, Unless you vape loads and it's a juice you really enjoy, that's going to last you like five days. At that point, is your coil going to be satisfactory? Depends on how you like your coil and how you like your atty to perform. But for me, on certain juices, most definitely no, it wouldn't. Um, I mean, custard, I get one tank, the second tank is all I'm getting. Third tank, I'm changing the coil and the cotton purely because it kills it. So, you know, if in that respect, 10 mil is perfect because one full tank of this and it's time for a rewick. But irrelevant, it's not what's stated. So, fast deck, sort it out. Um, now, what else does it say? It says 30 millimeters. I don't disbelieve that. I've got no reason to disbelieve it. I haven't got calipers on me, so I can't check it. But, you know, we'll, we'll take that as gospel despite the fact they've lied already. Um, let's get to some of the bump about it. Uh, standard 510 drip tip. It takes a standard 510 drip tip. It ain't a standard 510 drip that comes with it. I mean, it's the size of one, but I, I could put this on atomizers, and honestly, it's bigger than the atomizer. It's absolutely, I mean, it's, it's gargantuan. The thing is absolutely huge. Um, chrome brass 510 contact pin. Okay, so that's the pin in the middle. That's chrome brass. So technically, it's in the chamber, which no doubt people will be kicking up about. Um, one air hole, not really a steady point necessarily. Um, bottom screw fill hole, that's true. I mean, it's styled after the light, and the light's a bottom screw fill hole. So, um, a height without drip tip is 56.6, and that's adding nearly an inch. So, it's a big atmiler. I did measure this, come out of 0.7, if you were wondering. Um, Okay, please note the Chinese made atomizer will, will may be stamped with the words designed in Russia, made in Germany on the bottom of it. What they're saying there is it may be stamped with that, which means they're saying it will be stamped with that, despite the fact it isn't designed in Russia or made in Germany. I mean, the, the original design of Russia made in Germany, but they can't claim this is designed in Russia because it's reverse engineered and then exploded and made bigger. So, technically, China designed this. Um, so, there you go. Uh, some of the other bits and bobs, colour silver, material stainless steel, minor parts may not be uh, stainless steel or may be made by non-SS. Well, we, they've stated that the, the positive pin is, and I can tell you them screws ain't either. Um, finish is brushed. I mean, it is brushed, but it's virgin on the polished brush, you know. Um, Drip included, yes. Core re rebuildable, yes. Core replaceable, no. And then some measurements for you. So 78.8 with the drip tip, apparently. 
and the weight of the AE without juice or a mod is 180 grams. Let me just check to see what the weight of this Panzer is. One moment, sorry, I've got a little bit of hiccups. Panzer's 289 grams without a battery. We're talking a half a kilo setup here, and it is it is huge. I mean, this is a big setup. This is the Hades with that Hades dripper from Fast Tech, and you know, it completely overshadows that, and that's big. So, it's huge. Um, so let's get back onto the cave run, I suppose. Had this for about a month now, and I'm still using it, so there you go. I mean, the build, Worm said that he got a hot leg a couple of times that he built it just purely because of the length of the leg between the wire, the, between the screws. Now it's going to depend on what build you're building, what wire you're using. Hot legs are more prone to thinner wires than they are the thicker ones. Um, and so on, but you know, beware of that. It's just one of them things, you know, wrap a bit of cotton over the, the, the straggling wire or build your call as sort of diagonal as possible, therefore to reduce the amount of uh, leg there is between the end of each coil to the post. It makes sense, um, and it's how I would have usually built my cave on anyway, diagonal, but I felt like going different today, so that's why we've gone this way. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's not a legitimate item, is it? So the, the build quality, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, this is the first atomizer designed for this size mod that I have taken out and about with me consistently. Um, I mean, for, for an extended period of time and still do. It's not my everyday, I don't pick it up every day, but I've taken it out more than a few times and you know, I've been quite happy to do so. If you're going out drinking, doubles up because not only it will last you all night, no matter how much you vape, it's also a perfect battery and weapon. weapon. Um, for those of you who may need that kind of thing. I think what I'll do is I'll go into the five point hit list, um, six point hit list in fact, straight away, uh, and, you know, cover everything else in there. Uh, so first of all, looks. Now, it started off for a K1 light. It does look like a K1 light with the exception of the, the branding, which they've stuck on, which isn't on the light, makes no sense. Um, and the drip tip is fucking horrible. It's it's not the worst looking thing, and I suppose in the grand scheme of things, it kind of fits with the size of everything else. But using it's not the best. But it's just it's the first thing you notice, and you go, "Wow!" Um, I'm going to give it an eight out of look, out of ten for looks. The drip tip ruins it for me. I mean, I would stick. Oh, let's have a look. I stick one something like this in. Let me just pop that out. Stick something like that in. That's a little glass Pyrex stainless steel affair from Fast Tech, and for me. Much better looking. That's now a ten. Um, so yeah, looks looks dependent on what you guys think anyway. But for me, I'm gonna give it an eight as it comes out of the box. There you go. Uh, usability. Now it's a K fun clone, but it's still a K fun design. So it's as usable as a K fun is, with the exception that you have to put more cotton in than you used to, and it's a lot more than you used to. If you think you put enough in, you haven't put a little bit more in. Um, and you know the potential of that hot leg issue and re-wicking, you know, leaving more space uh, between your core and your, and your posts than you might necessarily be used to. Um, but you know, it's not a big deal. I've had, I've had ribbon in here that was fine. Um, in fact, it was nicer to put ribbon in this than it is in my genuine cave. I'm purely because I've got that extra space using 0.8 ribbon. You don't get many wraps before you're running out of space. Um, so I mean, that was nice to do. Um, other than that, I mean, you, you fill it in a normal fashion. With this one, it's a pain in the bum because it doesn't come with a PMMA tank. Fast tech, include both, please. Um, because the real one has it. If you're going to clone it, do it properly. And give us what everything the real one's got. And take this branding off because it's not on the legitimate one. Not there is a legitimate one, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, they've gone the wrong way with that. Take away the branding, give us a tank. Much prefer that. Um, so, without the tank... Filling it in the way it's intended from the bottom, and you'll notice if you've got a real K fun like I have, is a pain in the ass. Now, with my genuine K, I do tend to run it with the full stainless steel setup. Many of you would have seen in videos that I've had the K fun on, um, but I've had that for a long time, and I kind of I know how much it takes to fill that up without looking, you know, without needing to see that juice level. Um, you know, I mean, I'm using this now at the minute. This this K fun tank section from Fast Tech fits perfectly if you're interested in them. Um, and you can see everything, and they do do those for this as well, and that I'm interested to see. But as it comes, because you can't fill it easily, um, and if you do top fill it, 
bad stuff happens as you've seen, um, I'm going to give you a billion eight because you've got hot leg, the spatial awareness and the extra cotton and the filling problem. So usability for me is going to get an 8 out of 10. So a little puff. Um, maintenance, well, I mean, cleaning everything is it's fairly easy to be honest with you because you're not going to be likely to lose anything just purely because of how big it is. Um, so maintenance, you change your cotton or your build and maintain your juice level as you would in any atomizer. Um, other than that, there's no major niggles in terms of maintenance, so it's going to get a 10 out of 10 for maintenance, um, just purely because it does. Um, flavour and vapour, build quality and price, which will I do first? Let's do build quality and price. Um, build quality and price. Uh, for me, build quality, it's not bad. It really isn't bad. I mean, if you have the clone, the fast tech clone, I mean, that that one I showed in the close up is a fast tech clone, the other 22mm one, but it's fucked from the, the, the day one, you know, the airflow's not there, for some reason the post has been drawn the wrong way, and as fast tech do, they cock up. Um, but if you have that clone and it works, the build quality is very reminiscent of that. It's it's really not bad. So for that build quality, I'm going to give it a 9. The price, well, we paid just over a tenner, but now they're 15 50 call it. Um, you struggle to find any atomizer of this size you know, or, or this atomizer in, in general in the UK for less than about 30 quid. I think Modern Natties have got one. Obviously, I would imagine the, the quality would be better on the Modern Natties one. Uh, and that tank I got come from the Modern Natties one, so no doubt I'll end up with that one because um, I have the tank. Um, but, it's it yeah, it's cheap. It's very cheap. You know, it's 15 quid now and the price is going to get a 10. Anyone who says... Fast text prices aren't a 10, it's talking out their backside. It's only if something doesn't work at all that you feel like you've been done over. And even in the price of the initial art article was good, it's just you've paid it and got nothing. So price is going to get a 10. Build quality versus price, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth 15 quid. No, no, no two ways about that. Flavour and vapour is next, and it's probably the one that we're most interested in. Um, Vapor to start with. Now the draw. It's about the same as my K Fun Light, to be honest with you. It's fractionally looser. I'd like more, to be honest. I would. I'd like a, a more more of a draw. I pick up this big setup and I think lung falls and I don't get it and it's strange to me and I do prefer the looser draw. Um, but that being said, it is reminiscent of a K Fun draw, so you know. Credit where it's due, I suppose. Lung pulls aren't necessarily saying it's easy to do this, it can be done, but you feel like you're forcing it a bit. Um, so, the vapor, it's definitely there, you know, but it could be more of a bigger draw. But the vapor's going to get a 10, it's, it's more than ample, it's more than a standard K fund, if you ask me. Um, and let's face it, it's not necessarily about the amount of vapor. And if you are a cloud chaser, you chance are you're not using a tank. But if you use a K farm, this is spot on, no problem. Ten. Va uh, uh, sorry, flavor, which is the one we're really, really interested in. It's a K farm vape. It is a very good flavor. Um, Running this side by side with the same juice that's in my K Fun light, the light very, very fractionally edges it, but we're talking, you know, not really noticeable to be honest with you. The vape flavour from this and the vape quality in general is, is bloody marvellous, it really is. It's, it's a solid vape, it does exactly what it's supposed to do and it tastes great. So the flavour is going to get a 10. If you're after a K Fun vape and a K Fun that's massive, then this is it. Um, I mean, you would expect it to be a K-Fun vape, but when I first saw it, um, I was kind of like, well, it's got a bigger chamber, therefore less flavour. Um, but because I packed the chamber out with cotton, I think it really makes a difference. You know, that chimney comes down quite low into the chamber as well, and that makes a difference with the reduction. Um, and yeah, the flavour's great. It really is. The flavour's really nice. In fact, I love it. So yeah, flavour and vapour, they're both tens. Um, now... Overall would be the last one. 
let's face it, this isn't every, for every day. Even if you are into this, it's still not for every day. Um, it's not practical, is it? It's huge. Now, if cars, long journey, spot on perfect, I'll be using it for that. But if you're going to the shops or you're going down a pub, you, you're going to run this on a 26650 mod. Now, this Panzer is particularly heavy, but the King's, you know, about the same. Hades isn't much, much lighter, and this is actually bigger than the Hades at the top. Um, you're not taking this with you to the shops, really. I mean, some people might and I have, but for the masses, you won't. You won't take this with you. This will be an indoor vape, you know. <laughs> if a vape's going to be an indoor vape, make it a ridiculous one. The idea for me with a K1 is it delivers one of the most solid vapes and consistent vapes that's out there. We've coupled with some of the best flavour, if not the best flavour from a tank, um, rivaling the dripper in some cases with certain juices, in my opinion, better. Um, but it's transportable. It's you, you can stick it on a NEM, you can stick it on a 22mm mod with an 18650 battery from EFS, 2,500 mAh, 4.5mm, take you through the day, most of the day, for some of you heavy vapors, would take you there and you'd be really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying this, but it's not. If I threw this at you, I would kill you. If you drop this on your toe, you're probably going to break it. I mean, if you're a burglar, perfect, just through the window and on you go. But it's not a practical item for everyday life. Um, so that's not great, but it's not sold as the most practical item in everyday life either, is it? Um, the bits not being SS, fast tech will learn. I swear to God, I don't understand how they're not learning that, I mean, it, personally, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, you can buy K-Fun screws, no problem. I mean, you can buy them from Fastec, saying it's still about 50p for four. But include it at Fastec. If by the off chance that any Fastec people that work there are listening to this, stop it. People are put off your products because they're non-stainless steel. Unless they're meant to be non-stainless steel, make them from the proper materials and spend a bit more. Let's face it, it's us, the customer, who push the money through you anyway. Um, so that will gripe some people. <sighs> There's not really any more negatives I can say about this. Positives are it's a great flavor, it's a great vapor, it holds masses, masses of e-liquid. Um, you know, it looks like it should. I don't like dripped it, but you know, it looks like it should. The finish is good, the build quality is more than respectable, the price is great. So, not just that, but the amount of extras they put on there for this, additional tanks, the middle sections, the full tank sections, custom top caps, loads. It's a, I know I haven't given it 10s all the way through, but it doesn't need to be 10s all the way through for me to give it a 10 overall, which, which is what I'm doing. It's my favourite gigantatomizer, gigantomizer. I'm that's copyright. Um, so I expect a clone from fast taking the next three to five working days. Um, it's my, my favorite big tank. It's my favorite big anything. I mean, I've got V3 and V4 Tobes at 28.5mm. I've got Hades Dripper, the big Stellar. I've got quite a few big atomizers now, but the others are all drippers. This is the first one to me that, despite the fact I said it's not practical, is, pra is the only one that's practical. The, the drippers, they, they hold an immense amount of e-liquid and that's spectacular. They're huge and that's great. The airflow's wicked on them and they perform like their smaller brothers and sisters. But the problem is because they're a dripper and you drip 60, 70, 80, 90 drops in them, you've got to vape it for 20 minutes if you filled it or fully primed it and then fully dripped it. Because if you don't and it tilts, you, you're pouring two mil of e-liquid wherever it lands. Um, and that's a pain in the arse. This... With the exception of when I first filled that, doesn't have a problem. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to be filling this for two days at least. Because this isn't, I don't just vape one device. Chances are this will still be going next week. The 26650 batteries I've got in there, you know, they're nearly 3,000 mAh. They're going to last me a day. It's just, I like things that are out, out there a bit, a bit left field, a bit ridiculous. I love the K-Fun. I love the Panzer. I love this setup as it is now. I can sit there and just puff away for ages and not have to worry about juice batteries or anything and that for me is the appeal to all this um, you know bigger 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 mods I've heard that 32 650s come in I mean even I think that's a fucking joke but if it does come I'm going to get it um, 
but no, I recommend it. If you want one, if you if you want have a need or just desire a massive tank and a massive mod, you can't really go wrong with this big K fun from Fast Tech. Um, like I say, I will end up with the mods and that is one, and I'll test that against this because it's the only thing I'll have to get, to test it against. But I would definitely recommend it for those of you out there that want one because I have not regretted it at all. I don't think Worm has either, um, and you know, it's. It makes me smile. Just I look at it, and it makes me smile. And for that reason alone, it's worth a tenner. But the fact that it performs like a K fund, as close as anything this side's ever going to, um, and it works well, you know, it's it's a no-brainer for me. Go and grab one if you want one. Um, other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. I have been Mr P with a ridiculous setup, uh, and I shall see you soon.